questions of doom. Hello and welcome to something of an unexpected video. This morning, I am making a video response to a comment posted on the Facebook page asking what exactly is the definition of an amateur archaeologist. Now, this is actually a really interesting question, in some ways quite simple to answer, in other ways potentially quite fraught with, uh, with, with nuances and difficulties. So I figured I'd make a little video and also thereby invite people to comment as well and hopefully add to this 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 discussion and, uh, and this curious quandary. Uh, this has been inspired by, by a comment which was actually posted on a news story which we shared yesterday, where the BBC was sharing that uh, on Lindisfarne, uh, an amateur archaeologist had uncovered a, a, a Saxon gravestone marker. This is part of the project recently uh, concluded, for this year at least, uh, by uh, Dave Petz of Durham University and also the Dig Ventures team, which was a crowd-funded uh, excavation, around 200 backers, um, plus people turn up and sort of pay a couple of hundred pounds uh, to, a, a day to sort of excavate on the site. And, and one of these people who, who were there digging uncovered this grave marker. And, uh, and uh, this, this was defined as being an amateur archaeologist who, who made the discovery. Now, the reason why this is interesting, an interesting question, is because actually archaeology ultimately has its roots in amateurism. Uh, yes, we are, um, by many definitions, uh, today a science, and, uh, and a science which has certain rules which govern how we practice this kind of thing. But, uh, but even more than, for example, people tinkering with, with principles of physics, you know, and prisms, this kind of thing, we, uh, as a profession, genuinely have our roots in people mucking about in fields uh, or just being curious about a castle or a barrow or something and just going out and digging it up, you know, over the course of a weekend or something. Um, you know, famously, vicars, for example, on the Salisbury Plain would go off and, you know, dig a druid druidic monument um, for, 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 for curiosity, for fun. So, in many ways, archaeology has its roots firmly in amateurism and... Therefore, it's actually quite reasonable to ask, what is an amateur archaeologist? Aren't we all sorts of amateurs in that sense? Now, I have to say, my, my instinct is to actually to react against that statement. Um, as true as it may be, as, as it may possibly be, uh, I don't feel like an amateur. Um, and I think the reason why I don't feel like one, and I think many archaeologists out there wouldn't either, is <laughs> on the one hand, partly because of the amount of time that we've invested in preparing for the moment of being an archaeologist, as well. You know, you know. So when 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 you're when the, a, a question is asked of you, or when 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 you're digging on something, or when you're examining an artifact or a building, you're, you've you, you know you've you've had years of prep and research and comparative uh, knowledge built up and debate and discussion, which has led you to, to be an archaeologist, to have the right to have a certain opinion or to, to, or to, to make a certain discovery. But that, uh, as much as, uh, as that's, that's sort of my instinct, is to go, no, no, but I, I, I trained hard for this. <laughs> um, that's also actually one of the things which makes me cringe most about archaeology. Uh, sometimes archaeologists can seem a little bit gatekeepery, you know, kind of like, no, you shall not pass. We are the gatekeepers of archaeology, you know, this kind of thing. And um, and so actually, uh, I don't think that's necessarily the best way to proceed. You know, uh, you're a professional because you've, uh, or you're, sorry, you're not an amateur because you've been to university. Um, I think it probably, ha uh, you know, you, there's, uh, it probably could be argued and would be argued by some that it's about uh, the amount of time that you've you've spent doing something. But even that isn't really a clear cut issue because actually, OK, fine, you know, I, I've spent the past seven years, eight years, um, going on to 10 years of my life and really formally studying and focusing on archaeology. Obviously, I've always been interested, but really actually trying to, to hone that knowledge. But that said, though, I mean, for example, at the Binchester excavation uh, last year when we did a site visit, it was very clear that, that an awful lot of the diggers there, uh, or for, for example, at Vindolanda earlier this year, um, are better than the than the than the trained archaeologists. Now, these, these people are are, are, are are in many ways the, the definition of an expert amateur. 
Uh, and so, uh, so actually you can have people with, with an immense knowledge and training and immense capacity um, for, 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 for archaeological expertise who, who are essentially turning up voluntarily. Uh, and so actually, maybe actually this, this word amateur uh, and confusing it with whether or not it's a professionalism or a, a, an extent of knowledge, an extent of time dedicated to something, is actually a bit of a red herring. Uh, and perhaps the whole point is that actually the definition of amateur and professional is whether or not you get paid to do what you're doing. Um, I'm reminded, you know, in my lifetime, for example, just about uh, the, the journey that, that rugby has gone over. In, certainly in, in, in Wales, for example, from essentially an attitude of amateurism towards a professional attitude. It used to be the joke that you know, Welshmen would play, play rugby to get fit, whereas, for example, people in New Zealand would get fit to play rugby. Um, and that sort, of, that sort of mindset in the course of my you know, 30 old years on this planet, 30 years, 31 years, <clears throat> has really shifted. And so it's gone from being an amateur thing to a professional thing. People are now paid, they look after their bodies, they're, essentially they're, 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 they, uh, they can't just do what they want because they're, you know, they are part of a structure, part of a formal uh, process which puts them in, in, a, in, a, in a sort of a destiny towards being a professional rugby player, towards playing a game once a week at least, this kind of thing. And maybe that's that's really where it comes down to on with archaeology. Um, amateur archaeologists don't have to go out in the rain um, when their boss tells them because they don't have a boss who's telling them to do it. Um, they aren't being paid. In fact, often they're paying to be on an archaeological site. And uh, and I suppose uh, that's arguably a far more luxurious way of doing archaeology <laughs> than uh, than some of the horror stories you hear from people who are you know, day in, day out professional diggers. We, um, they have to dig in all sorts of conditions and and uh, and often with some very, uh, very unfortunate uh, side effects, you know, often getting cold, often, you know, not necessarily having the best uh, work conditions, this kind of thing. Um, so maybe that's what, really what it boils down to is amateurism in in that sense. And in, in, the, in the, I suppose, the broadest sense is really about whether or not you're being paid. Hmm... But anyway, um, that, those are just some of my thoughts. I don't think there's, there's a definite answer here because archaeologists, as I say, started out as amateurs by definition. Obviously, though, you can't be an amateur lab tech, can you? Really, you can't. You know, you can't be an amateur um, mass spectrometer, uh, trometrizer, and that is someone who uses those that machinery to study the makeup of an object. You have to have a certain expertise, a certain professionalism behind you. So, so is it linked with? with training and education? Is it linked with exposure? That is the amount of time that you've been doing the job. Or is it simply linked with uh, with money and, and whether or not you're being paid to do the job? I think these are interesting questions. And I think that simple question, what is the definition of an amateur archeologist is one which bared some thoughts and, and a slightly longer answer than just a couple of sentences on Facebook. So here we go. This is, this is, this is, this is that response. And I'll hand over to you. Um, I have to say, actually, uh, today we have a fairly busy day planned. Liv is still here. So uh, we're going to have an afternoon tea and then go and do some filming in the Great North Museum, which should be fun. And uh, at the moment, though, Mrs. Soup and Liv are both having a lovely lie-in. So lucky them. Maybe that's the other thing as well, you know. Amateur Liv gets to lie-in. <laughs> no, 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 no. no. Don't tell her I said that. <laughs> anyway, guys, please do comment below. Um, I'd love to hear what you think about this issue. Um, I think it's a, it's, a, it's an interesting one. And I think it's one also that's quite emotive because there are those out there who would suggest that archaeologists should not be professionals, um, both you know, from a political background and other, you know, for funding issues. Some people suggest that actually more archaeology should simply be uh, amateur or voluntary. So, yeah, please do comment below. I'd love to see where this goes. Anyway, I say, got things to do. Until next time, do take care. Bye-bye.